Baba Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya A reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 9, Text Next five. Okay, so today we have a 12 matra verse, so the tune will be a little bit different. Please follow along. Savaita deiva pratipaditam giram. Savaita deiva pratipaditam giram. Daivim parigyata paratma nirnaya. Davim parigyata paratma nirnaya Tam bhakti bhavo bhyagrinad asatvaram Tad bhakti bhavo bhyagrinad asatvaram Parishruto rushravasam druvakshitihi Parishruto rushravasam druvakshitihi Savaita daiva pratipaditam giram Savaita daiva pratipaditam giram Daivim parigyata paratma nirnaya Daivim parigyata paratma nirnaya 
तम भक्ति भावो भ्यग्रिनाद असत्वरम तद भक्ति भावो भ्यग्रिनाद असत्वरम परिश्रुतो रुश्रवसम द्रुवाक्षिति ही परिश्रुतो रुश्रवसम द्रुवाक्षिति ही सवाई तदैवा प्रतिपादितम गिरम सवाई तदैवा प्रतिपादितम गिरम दैविम परिग्यात परात्मनिर्नाया दैविम परिग्यात परात्मनिर्नाया तम भक्ति भावो भ्यग्रिनाद असत्वरम तम भक्ति भावो भ्यग्रिनाद असत्वरम परिश्रुतो रुश्रवसम द्रुवाक्षिति ही परिश्रुतो रुश्रवसम द्रुवाक्षिति ही सवाई तदैवा प्रतिपादितम गिरम या तपरात्मा निर्नाया तम भक्ति भावो व्यग्रनान सत्वरम परिश्रुतो रुक्षवसम द्रुवाक्षिति ही सवाईता दैवा प्रतिपादितम गिरम दैविम परिग्यात परात्मा निर्नाया तम भक्ति भावो व्यग्रिनाद सत्वरम परिश्रुतो रुश्रवसम द्रुवाक्षिति ही Sa, Dhruva Maharaj. Vai, certainly. Tada, at that time. Eva, just. Pratipaditam, having attained. Giram, speech. Daivim, transcendental. Parigyata, understood. Paraatma, of the super soul. Nirnayaha, the conclusion. Tam, to the to the Lord. Bhakti bhavaha, situated in devotional service. Abhyagrinat. Offered prayers. Asatvaram. Without any hasty conclusion. Parishruta. Widely known. Urushravasam. Whose fame. Dhruvakshitihi. Dhruva whose planet would not be annihilated. Translation. At that time, Dhruva Maharaj became perfectly aware of the Vedic conclusion and understood the absolute truth and his relationship with all living entities. In accordance with the line of, in accordance with the line of devotional service to the Supreme Lord, whose fame is widespread, Dhruva, who in the future would receive a planet which would not be annihilated even during the time of dissolution, offered his deliberate and conclusive prayers. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktaranda Swami Srila Prabhupada. There are many important items to be considered in this verse. First of all, the relationship between the Absolute Truth and the relative material and spiritual energies is here understood by a student who has, completely, who has complete knowledge of the Vedic literature. Jura Maharaj never, w never went to any school or ac academic teacher to learn the Vedic conclusion. But because of his devotional service to the Lord, as soon as the Lord appeared 
and touched his forehead with his conch shell, automatically the entire Vedic conclusion was revealed to him. That is the per process of understanding the Vedic literature. One cannot understand it simply by academic learning. The Vedas indicate that only to one who has unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord as well as in the spiritual master is the Vedic conclusion revealed. The example of Jura Maharaj is that he engaged him himself in devotional service to the Lord according to the order of his spiritual master, Narada Muni. As, the, as a result of his rendering service of his rendering such devotional service with great determination and austerity, the Supreme Personality of God had personally manifested himself before him. Dhruva was only a child. He wanted to offer nice prayers to the Lord, but because he lacked sufficient knowledge, he hesitated. But by the mercy of the Lord, as soon as the, Lord as soon as the Lord's concho touched his forehead, he became completely aware of the Lord's Vedic of, of the Vedic conclusion. That conclusion is based on proper understanding of the difference between Jiva and Paramatma, the individual soul and the super soul. The individual soul is forever a servant of the super soul, and therefore his relationship with the super soul, with the super soul is to offer service. That is called Bhakti Yoga, or Bhakti Bhava. Dhruva Maharaj offered his prayers to the Lord not in the way of the impersonal philosophers, but as a devotee. Therefore, it is clearly said here, Bhakti Bhava, the only prayers worth offering are those offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose reputation is spread far and wide. Dhruva Maharaj wanted to have the kingdom of his father, but his father refused even, even, refused, even allowed, allow him to get on his lap. In order to fulfill his desire, the Lord had already created a planet known as the Pole Star, Dhruva, Dhruva Loka, which was never to be annihilated even at the time of dissolution of the universe. Dhruva Maharaj attained his perfection not by acting hastily, but by patiently executing the order of his spiritual master. And therefore he became so successful that he saw the Lord face to face. Now he was further enabled by the causeless mercy of the Lord to offer fitting prayers to the Lord, to glorify or to offer prayers unto the Supreme, unto the Supreme one needs the Lord's mercy. One cannot write to glorify the Lord unless one is endowed with his causeless mercy. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayet Mukam Kuroti Vachalam Pangulam Gayate Grim Yakripatamaham Bande Shri Gurum Dinatarinam Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Mishwaram Nama Om Vishnubhudaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Indridumna Swami Tanabhine Namo Prabhupada Pritasaya Jagannatha Yatrananda Murtaya Bhaktusukena Krishna Kirtanena Narsimhena Rakshatayana Maha Vancha Kalpatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai. So we are coming towards the the summit of the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj, him offering prayers, he's seeing the Lord now, he's getting the association of the Lord, he's getting the fulfillment of all his real desires. As we will hear soon, Dhruva Maharaj repents, having desired such useless things as a, as a kingdom, as fame, as power. And he realized that he achieved the goal even that he couldn't have imagined, the association and pure love of God, right? So... Through this verse, Prabhupada is very clearly illustrating, and in the translation itself, um, it's described that only by the mercy of the Lord can one offer anything that is of any value to the Lord. He has everything, and it's only by His power that we are able to give anything. Right? Even the useless things we try to give is by His energy. We, you know, our material body, everything we can do, everything that we have, anything that we can achieve in this material world is the Lord ultimately, and we're simply offering what is His to Him again. Right? But if, it, if, the, if it's going to be of any value, it has to be only with His mercy and with His blessing that we can produce anything of actual relevance or something that He would actually want. And in this, in this case, Dhruva Maharaj is trying to offer something to the Lord, but He has nothing, so He wants to offer prayers. But He sees Himself unfit, unable to produce proper prayers or something of, of, some, of some value. And so the Lord very mercifully touches him with his conch shell, and therefore he is given the conclusion of the Vedas, as Prabhupada puts it. And what is the conclusion of the Vedas, which is mentioned actually three times in the purport, is the relationship between the Paramatma, 
and the super soul. Understanding your relationship with, between you and the Lord is the conclusion of the Vedas. So all the Vedas that we have, everything that exists, is simply to bring one to that understanding of the eternal relationship between the Jiva and the Paramatma, and how our eternal relationship with him is of service. Sometimes when we describe this to someone who is not necessarily acquainted with our philosophy, with the purpose of Srila Prabhupada, the word service has a negative connotation, like slavery. Yeah? Why would we willingly put ourselves in this very humble and um, wretched, destitute position of being a servant, eternal servant of someone? But this is a misunderstanding, and this is simply because people in this world want to be the controller and enjoyer. But when we see the actual greatest happiness that can be derived in this material world is that of service. It's simply in love, right? Prabhupada describes that the greatest or the closest thing we can see to pure love in this material world is that of a mother to its child, right? And what is the mother doing? Serving, hand and foot. Everything the child needs is service, right? From feeding, taking care, giving attention, changing the diaper, putting to sleep, non-stop service, right? Is the mother going to go to the court, this is injustice, I'm being abused, I'm being taken advantage of all day, I just have to serve this thing and it doesn't do anything to me, it doesn't give me anything in, in return, just more you know, dirty diapers, that's all I get in return. No, because it's out of love. So the mother is happily serving the child and getting supreme pleasure out of it. Right? Everything the child does is, does is beautiful. Makes a mess, oh, so cute. No, doesn't make a mess, oh, so cute. Plays around, so cute. Everything is wonderful. So when you love someone to such a great extent, so unflinching love, all you want to do is serve. And you're not thinking, what am I going to get in return? Just like the mother is not thinking, what am I going to get? This baby better be a nice kid when it grows up. This baby better make me millions of dollars. This baby better be this and better be that. No. She's in the moment, enjoying the pleasure of serving her child, because it's pure love. So when you love someone so purely, you're never expecting something in return. All you want to do is serve and please that person that you love. And so the jiva, his eternal position is to be happy. And what is our greatest happiness going to be? Serving the person we love the most. And who are we supposed to love the most? And who do we love the most we just don't know? The supreme being, the super soul, who is eternally there, waiting for us to understand that. Yeah, the mother is serving the child, day and night. And one day the child will realize that love and realize that appreci and appreciate the mother. But the, the mother doesn't care. The mother continues serving. doesn't matter what happens. The mother will continue loving the child. So the Supreme Lord, in the same way, he's completely always helping and helping us in every way he can to make us happy, to make us benefit from everything we're trying to do in the hopes that one day we'll turn around. One day we'll see, wow, he's been there all along. He's been our greatest friend. And therefore, reconnect and make our relationship again there. It's like when your dearest friend is going through a difficult time, you still have to be there to support them, give them love, give them affection. But he's in a whole different state of mind. He doesn't appreciate what you're doing. But you're still going to be there. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, you can treat me harshly, you can deal with me in a rough way, but I'll still be your servant, life after, you know, birth after birth. So in the same way, if you really love someone, it doesn't matter what's going on, you'll continue, continue helping them, doesn't matter what's happening. And so that's what the super soul is doing for us. Even though we're ignoring him, not taking care, not developing a relationship, not appreciating everything he's doing for us, not even acknowledging his presence, but he will continue for eternity. One day, by the mercy of the Lord and his devotees, we will reconnect with him. And that will be Bhakti Yoga, the connection of love, the reconnection of love between us and the Supreme Personality of God. That is the conclusion of the Vedas. And through that conclusion, Dhruva Maharaj was able to get the highest goal, association with the Lord himself, and being able to serve the Lord. How did he serve? With prayers. Yeah, so this is a very, very beautiful pastime, and we are going to go on to hear many, many more amazing things in this pastime as it goes on. But today is also the appearance day of Srivas Pandit, Sri Srivas Thakur Ki Jai. He is the final of the five, the five, the Panchatattva. We've, this whole few months, we've been very much in Gauralila, 
enjoying the different pastimes and hearing, relishing different pastimes of each one. First Advaita Acharya, then Nityananda Trayodashi, then Gaur Pranim, then Garadar, and now we have Srivas Thakur. Garadar Pandit's past? Still to come, right. So um, Srivas Thakur is today, his appearance day. Of course, we know Srivas Thakur in the spiritual world, he is Narada Muni, right? The embodiment of the greatest devotee. And that's why in, in the Panchatattva Pranam Mantra, that we have Panchatattva Atmakam Krishnam, Bhaktarupa Swarupakam, Bhaktavataram, Bhaktakyam, Namami, Bhakta Shaktikam. So you have the five personalities there, right? So you have Panchatattva Atmakam Krishnam, Bhaktarupa. So Bhaktarupa is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the embodiment of a devotee. The Lord comes in the form of devotee. Then Swarupa. Bhakta Swarup is Nityananda Prabhu. Bhakta Avatara is, is Advaita Acharya, the, the Lord in the form of an incarnation. He's Mahavishnu. Then Bhakta Akyam, the, the greatest devotee, Srivas Thakur. And Bhakta Shaktikam, Namami Bhakta Shaktikam. Bhakta Shakti is Garadar Pandit, the external energy of the Lord. Right? She's, he's Radharani, the incarnation of Radharani in the form of a devotee. So those five personalities together are required for us to achieve the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And if you, you can take it, I mean, many devotees describe it in many wonderful ways, and there's very intricate ways of understanding it, but the way that I like to think of them is that you have the Lord himself, you have the embodiment of the spiritual master, you have the embodiment of the super soul, the eternal, the Chaitya Guru, then you have the Lord's external energy who's engaging you in devotional service, and you have the devotee, the mercy of all his devotees, Srivas Thakur, that gives you the ability to even come close. So if you look at them as a five, you need all five of their individual mercies or together for you to be able to practice Krishna consciousness. And that's why we chant at least 16 times a day, if you're only chanting your rounds, we chant Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadar, Shiva Sadigora Bhaktavrinda, to get their mercy. Prabhupada, in the, in the purport to Chaitanya Charitamrita, I think, I don't remember exactly which verse, he's talking about how when chanting the Maha Mantra, one has to consider the ten offenses. But there are no such restrictions and there's no such offenses to the, to the Panchatattva Maha Mantra. And therefore, one should chant the Panchatattva Maha Mantra and then chant the Maha Mantra to derive the ultimate benefit. So we have to understand the importance of the Panchatattva and we have to understand the importance of each of those personalities and by developing a relationship with them and understanding who they are, like the conclusion of the Vedas, understanding our relationship with those personalities, we can better serve them, we can better understand them, and better derive their mercy. Yeah? So, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami, he talks about each individual personality of the Panchadatva. But in this case, we're simply going to focus mainly on Shiva's Pandit. Uh, this is from Srila Prabhupada, sorry. This is a, this is a purport for 6.16.26 of Chaitanya Charitamrita. So understanding that, that Srivas Thakur in the spiritual world, he's Narada Muni, so Prabhupada is talking about who, who Narada Muni is. He says, as preeminent representative of God, Narada Muni is often considered the original spiritual master. Sri Srila Prabhupada states in his commentary to Srimad Bhavadam 6.5.22, the immediate spiritual master is the representative of Narada Muni. There is no difference between the instructions of Narada Muni and those of the, of the present spiritual master. In the purport to Chaitanya Charitamrita 6.16.26, Prabhupada refers to Narada Muni as the father of devotional service. So this statement as Prabhupada describing him as the father of devotional service and the original spiritual master, we can see examples of this in all the pastimes, of all the incarnations, in so many pastimes in Srimad Bhagavatam, of Narada Muni instigating someone to take on to devotional service or instigating the Lord to appear and make his pastimes manifest. And there's so many amazing pastimes. I'll just um, speak of a few. So we have, of course, the pastime of Narsingadev and Prahlad Maharaj. 
when the demigods came, when Hiranyakashipu was performing his austerities and the demigods came to destroy his kingdom and to kidnap his wife who was pregnant with a child because they were so fearful that the son of Hiranyakashipu would be even worse than him. So they thought if they're able to kidnap the wife with the child, they'd be able to take this child and therefore not let him become the great demon that he was meant to be. But Narada Muni came and stopped them and said, no, this child will be a great devotee. And he preached to the wife of Hiranyakashipu, knowing that she won't remember anything but Prahlad Maharaj will. And so he made Prahlad Maharaj a devotee within the womb of, I forgot the name of Hiranyakashipu's wife. Yes, Kayadu or Kay Kayadu, yeah, Kayadu. I'm mixing with Kadru, yeah, Kayadu. So um, he preached to her, preached so much Srimad Bhagavatam, and Prahlad Maharaj imbibed everything. So when Prahlad Maharaj was born, he was already born a pure devotee of the Lord, fully conscious and understanding and, and with full devotion to the Lord. And so by the intervention of Narada Muni, Prahlad Maharaj became a devotee. And because Narada Muni knew that Hiranyakashipu would not be able to tolerate his own son being a great devotee, he would start harassing Prahlad Maharaj, which would make Nishingadev appear now, <laughs> not in a couple more years. Now he would appear, right? So Narada Muni, knowing that he was so impatient, he wanted Nishingadev to appear now. He, he, he will appear right now. He wanted Nishingadev to appear right now, right? Not in a Jai Nishingadev Bhagavan Aki Jai. He wanted him to come now and protect his devotee. He wanted his pastimes to happen already. And so he instigated it by preaching to Prahlad Maharaj. Then later we see in the pastime of Krishna, right? The prophecy was told that the eighth son of Devaki would be the one to kill Kamsa. Kamsa was going to kill Devaki, but by the expert preaching of Vasudev, Kamsa was willing to wait. And so Vasudev very dutifully was bringing each child to Kamsa, and Kamsa was saying, no, it's okay, I'm only worried about the eighth child. But Narada Muni was thinking, no, Krishna has to come now. So he went to Kamsa and he said, Kamsa, you're not, you're not thinking straight. These demigods are very tricky. They say the eighth son. But if you line up all the sons of someone and you count, if you start from here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if you start from the middle, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It could be this one, right? You have eight, you could start from here, you could start from here. You don't know which one the eighth one is. So if you only kill the eighth one, that means that you know, the actual eighth could be the second one, could be the third one, could be the fourth one. And so Kamsa, thinking that Narada Muni was his well-wisher, thought, oh yes, you're correct, you're correct. So he went and he was killing eight, each one of Devaki's sons. Right? To make sure. So in that way, immediately Vasudev, when one child would die, would immediately try for another son, and the next son would come, and the next son would come, and it would be faster that Krishna would take birth. Narada Muni was impatient. He wanted Krishna to appear now. Right? Then again... There's many other pastimes um, when Rukmini, when Rukmini was in the palace about to be wed to Shishupal, Narada Muni was, knew that Rukmini is the eternal associate of Krishna and she wanted to be with him internally even though she didn't know about Krishna yet. So he went to Rukmini and he was describing Krishna's, who Krishna is, his pastimes, his fame, his glories. And in that way he made Rukmini have an intense desire to be with Krishna. And so therefore she wrote the letter to, to Krishna that was sent by the Brahmana and Krishna eventually came and kidnapped her, right? Took her away. So this pastime was also because of Narada Muni. There's so many pastimes. The story of Valmiki, right? We know the story of Valmiki, how Narada Muni preached to him, made him into a great devotee, and eventually Valmiki was able to write the entire Ramayana. And we know it because of the mercy of Narada Muni. Then we also know, of course, we know Srimad Bhagavatam was, the, was the, because of Narada Muni. After Vyasadev wrote all the Puranas, all the Vedas, he was feeling unsatisfied. Right? He felt that he was, something was missing. And because, Nar because he was feeling that way, Narada Muni came and explained to him that you have not described the direct fame, glories, and pastimes of the Lord. And therefore, you're feeling that your work is still undone. And therefore, we have Srimad Bhagavatam. The story of Mirgari, right? Mirgari the hunter. Because of Narada Muni, he became the greatest devotee simply by the power of the Lord's name, right? And by the mercy of Narada Muni. Then we know, of course, of the 10,000 sons of, of Daksha, right? Narada Muni saw that they were born, saw that they had the ability to become great devotees, they were greatly intelligent, and so he went to preach to them. They were going to become householders and, you know, give progeny to the whole universe. 
But he said, no, they should become devotees. So he made them all into devotees. And of course he got cursed. But this was all because Narada Muni is the spiritual master of the universe. He's simply traveling one place to another making devotees. So of course it makes sense that in the past time, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srinivas Acharya was the, was the person who made Mahaprabhu start the movement. Advaita Acharya invited him to this world, but it was in the house of Srivas Thakur where Mahaprabhu was doing his bhajan and making himself full of ecstatic love. He was already, but he was relishing it in the house of Srivas Thakur. Right? Those, those midnight bhajans, all night bhajans in the house of Srivas Thakur was all because of the, of the mercy of Srivas. Right? So the movement began in his house and through that movement, till today, the entire world is getting the holy name because of the mercy of Srivas Thakur. So there's so many pastimes in Chaitanya Charitamrita describing the glories of Srivas Acharya, describing the glories of Srivas Pandit. And we have to take advantage and read about them and understand the great mercy that they have bestowed upon us. And because of their mercy that we know anything about them and know anything about Krishna, that we're here in this temple that we know. Because of the mercy of the Panchatattva, because of the mercy of Srivas Thakur. So just to say a few of the pastimes, um, of course we know one of the, when Mahaprabhu was still Nimai Pandit, um, he wasn't yet in his, in his devotional mood or beginning his, his Krishna conscious preaching, so to speak. There's one pastime where Mahaprabhu was walking on the banks of the Ganga. And at that time, the devotees were avoiding Mahaprabhu because Mahaprabhu was such an expert scholar and logician and, you know, expert at logic. Whenever he would meet them, he would enter into an argument, or enter into a debate about the greatness of different... Lo- he, he was having fun. Yeah, right? He was enjoying in this, in this mood of being the greatest pundit. He wanted to do that. So the devotees, not wanting to engross themselves and discuss materialistic topics, they were avoiding Mahaprabhu because they didn't want to enter into these great discussions about logic and Nyaya and Sastra. They simply wanted to talk about the Lord. So one day when Mahaprabhu was walking on the side of the Ganga, he was alone at that time. And Srivas Thakur saw him, so Srivas Thakur went to him and, and preached to Mahaprabhu. He told them that you're wasting this greatly fortunate human form of birth in materialistic things. Why not dedicate this life, this only life you have, to Krishna? And because of that, Mahaprabhu then began his devotional pastimes. He then went and got initiated and everything. So this, because of the mer- Mahaprabhu was showing through this pastime that by the mercy of the devotee, one comes in contact with Krishna. Of course, Mahaprabhu already was who he was. But he waited for Srivas Thakur to give him the instructions so therefore he could go on to his Krishna conscious movement. Right? So then when Mahaprabhu began his, his great preaching, it was in the house of Srivas Thakur. There's many pastimes of the different kirtans. In the, ha- in the house of Srivas Thakur is also where the murdanga was broken. Right? When they began their kirtans, great big kirtans, then the Muslim, the Kazi, the Chang Kazi, he sent his army to go and stop them. And they broke the Murdanga. Then from the house of Srivas Thakur, Mahaprabhu went with his army of devotees to the, to, the, to the Kazi's house. And that pastime took place. So we have a lot to thank Srivas Thakur for everything he has done for us and everything he has shown us and the mercy he has given. So on this day, we will remember him, we will worship him, we will ask for his mercy and also try to hear more about him. So I encourage all of you during the day when you get a chance to read about him, hear about him. There's so many lectures. There are way more and eloquently put as I am able to speak today. But please do listen, yeah? Today is also the disappearance day of His Holiness Sridhar Swami. Sridhar Swami Ki Jai. Um, many of you may or may not know of him. He's a very senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Um, and today, on 2004, on Srivas Shrivas Thakur's appearance day, he passed away in Mayapur. And so I thought it would be befitting to speak a little bit about his life and um, who he was as a person so we can relish and we can understand and get his mercy as well. Um, Sridhar Maharaj, Sridhar Swami, um, he became a devotee in the early 70s and he was preaching for many, many years as a brahmachari, you know, helping out here and there, but he had an intense desire to really start preaching. And so finally, when he came to India, to Bombay, when they just purchased the, the land in Juhu, Prabhupada wanted him to 
take care of the construction of the temple. But Sridhar Maharaj really wanted to preach. So he said, Prabhupada, please, can I preach? And Prabhupada was telling him, no, you should stay and you should um, take care of the construction. You should oversee the construction of the temple. So he said, no, Prabhupada, please, can I preach? And this went back and forth a couple of times. And so for, finally, Prabhupada, understanding his intense desire, he gave Sridhar Swami sannyas. And he got sannyas. And after he took sannyas, he went absolutely mad preaching preaching non-stop all over India. Many of the devotees were a little concerned about how he would be able to eloquently preach to the higher society of India, which at that time they were mainly preaching towards the higher society. Because Sridhar Maharaj was quite well built. I don't know if you've seen pictures. He's quite well built. He had a very humorous, informal way of preaching. And um, they were thinking, how will, that, how will they react to that, that sort of preaching? But his infectious love and care for everyone he met made so many more people devotees than any of the other preachers at that time. He was just spreading love of Krishna everywhere and anyone everywhere he met. And people came to appreciate Krishna consciousness because of his character, because of his behavior. That's why they came in contact with Krishna consciousness and they learned to appreciate um, everything he was, the person that he was. Um, around, around 1997, after many, many years of preaching, he was actually one of the foremost. Um, in India, they have a system called life membership. I don't know, it's so, not so common anywhere else, but it's basically you inscribe someone to a uh, yearly, they give a certain amount of donation, and they also get all Prabhupada's books. They get um, weekly subscriptions to all the different magazines and publications of BBT. They get to stay in different temples a certain amount of times a year. And so he was inscribing people left, right, and center. So many people were becoming life members because of the preaching of Sridhar Swami. But in 1997, he got diagnosed with hepatitis C and cirrhosis of the liver. So he was very, very sick already in 1997. And so different god brothers and senior devotees at that time were telling him, Maharaj, you have to simply, you know, normally that disease is fatal. And so within one or two years of trying to battle the disease, they realized that Maharaj wouldn't be around much longer. And so they told him to go to Vrindavan, you know, chant, focus on your bhajan, and then you'll be prepared to leave this world. So after two months in Vrindavan of Maharaj chanting and trying to focus on reading and only, you know, in his own bhajan, he said, this is not me. I'd rather die preaching than sit here and doing nothing. I feel so useless. So even though his, his condition, he would simply go to a hospital in Bombay, get checked up, whatever they could do, and then fly to America. When he got to America, he would check himself into a hospital, they would check that everything is okay, and he would go preaching. And like that, he was going from country to country, hospital to hospital, preaching nonstop. He wouldn't stop preaching. The different countries he visited within those two years, they had give a list here. Um, so we have London, Croatia, Slovenia, Los Angeles, Vancouver, Brazil... Uh, Canada, India, he would go like a few months in India, a few months back. He would constantly be traveling and preaching. He wouldn't stop. And as his disease got worse and worse, sometimes he would go into comas. There would be two, three days, one week, two weeks, he would be in a hospital in extreme, extreme uh, situations in intensive care. But as soon as he got better again, he would immediately go out and preach. He wouldn't stop preaching. And the main thing that everyone who met him would say is that he was always happy. He was always so caring, affectionate, but inside was this happiness that was infectious. And that's why he also got the name the Jolly Swami. Jolly means like happy. The Jolly Swami was a nickname he was given. Uh, when in 2001, after, uh, no, sorry, in 2003, so this is 2009, 2000, 2000, 2001, 2003, he was struggling with this disease. Actually, he also had um, an inflammation in his abdomen, in his belly, that would fill up with water periodically. Up to 20, 25 liters of water would be abs absorbed. And so that would have to be drained in different hospitals he would go to. So it was very difficult for him, but he was so happy, and there was never any sign of his distress in his preaching. No one, like, no one would even notice. Of course, they saw that he was sick, but his mood and his attitude... No one would ever be affected because he was so, so happy and so full of the inspiration to preach. In 2003, in January, was the 25th anniversary of the Juhu Temple opening. So Maharaj took it upon himself, even though he was so sick, to organize and, and execute the huge celebration in Juhu Temple. And he made it a point to make sure he invited all the devotees who served in Juhu Temple at the time when Prabhupada was there. So he invited his god brothers, anyone who was there, to please come and take part in this festival. 
And after the festival, Gir Giriraj Maharaj was saying that when he spoke to people who went to that festival, they said that it was, they felt like if Prabhupada was still on the planet. There was so much bliss and happiness and Krishna consciousness, so infectious in that festival that they felt that Prabhupada was still on the planet, that Prabhupada was still there, that they felt that he w it was just the same, that kind of happiness. That was the power of Maharaj. Um, during that visit in India in 2003, in January, he was also diagnosed with liver cancer. So it was just one more thing that came onto his list of other, other problems he had. So he flew back to America to do more preaching, of course. But in that last visit to America in 2003, so I think it was around March, March, uh, April 2003, he went to America, he went to Canada, he was doing more preaching programs. But it became very evident that Maharaj wouldn't be around much longer. And so in a discussion with um, Giriraj Maharaj, he, he described that he had three desires left. He wanted to wait until Gaur Purnim 2004 to be able to see the installation of the Panchatattva Didis in Mayapur. He wanted to reach Mayapur. He wanted to survive to be able to get to Mayapur. He wanted to see the installation and he wanted to last until Gaur Purnim, if Krishna wants. That was his three desires that he wanted to have. And so they started making preparations for Maharaj to go to Mayapur in the end of 2003. They were thinking how to do it, how to, you know, which hospitals to visit on the way to get there so that he would make it. And um, on the way, when he was going to stop in London, all his um, disciples from, from Europe wanted to come and see him, wanted to take his fi their final darshan and be able to interact with him one final time. And so instead of just transiting, he stopped in London for a couple of days to, do, to, to be able to give his, his darshan to all those devotees and to reciprocate with their love. And in, on that visit, there was a few of his disciples who wanted to take Brahman initiated, who haven't been Brahman initiated at that time yet, and wanted to take Brahman initiation for Maharaj. And so my Guru Maharaj, Indraduna Swami, he met Maharaj there in London, and they were going to travel together to Mayapur. And so on that, on that occasion, my Guru Maharaj was telling the story that um, the disciples came to get Brahman initiation. They did the yagya, and Maharaj, of course, was just sitting. And then when it was time to say the Gayatri, Maharaj, because he had toxins in his brain as well, like because of the cancer and because of hepatitis C and all the different things, when someone gets that, generally, they can't even remember their own name, what to speak of you know stories or anything being able to speak was it's difficult they become delirious they can't remember anything or put their thoughts in order and so when Maharaj gave the class with no problem and then when it came time to say the Gayatri mantra Maharaj couldn't remember the order of the Gayatri so Indradamna Maharaj was saying one word into Maharaj's ear and then Maharaj would repeat, repeat the word to the devotees and like that they heard the whole Gayatri but after he finished the Gayatri he, he started talking about the holy name and my Guru Maharaj describes three of the verses he quoted, but actually he quoted, I think, ten or something. He said, the first three, he said, he said, Srila Maharaj remarked, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalau Nasteva, 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 Katiranyata. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of deliverance is the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. There's no other way, there's no other way, there's no other way. Then he said, Krishna Varnam, Tasha, Krishna, Sango, Parsha, Sango, Sango Pangastra Parsadam Yagnai Sankirtana Prayer Yajantihi Sumeda Saha. In this age of Kali, intelligent persons perform congregational chanting to worship the incarnation of Godhead, who constantly sings the name of Krishna. Although his complexion is not blackish, he is Krishna himself. He is accompanied by his associates, servants, weapons, and confidential companions. Kaler Dosha Nide Rajan Astihi Eko Mahan Guna. Kirtanad Yeva Krishnasya Mukta Sangha Param Rajet. My dear king, although Kali Yuga is in the ocean of faults, is an ocean of faults, there is still one good quality about this age. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one can become free from material bondage and promoted to the transcendental kingdom. So like this, Maharaj went on describing verse after verse with translation about the holy name. So at the end, my, my Guru Maharaj, he talked to Maharaj and he said, Maharaj, you weren't able to remember the order of the Gayatri, but how are you able to you know, clearly quote and talk about the Holy Name? And he said, because the Gayatri is meant to chant the Holy Name. Because of the Gayatri, one is helping one become purified, so he's able to chant the Holy Name. So the Holy Name never leaves my mind. Other things may get mixed up, but the Holy Name is fixed, he said. So the glories of the Holy Name was clear and crisp in his mind, even though the disease and everything else that was, he was going through. Then finally, when he came to Mayapur after that trip, it was um, February, February? 
end of January 2004. He came to Mayapur and in Kolkata, of course, he was checked in the doctor. He came to Mayapur and um, many doctors accompanied him. And I actually remember that I went to see him when he was there in, in the conch building. And the doctors were there, they were checking him. His belly was huge. Like I was peeking through the window, I had to go after that. But his, I remember his belly was huge. I think he had like 30 something liters. It was, it was stuck. And um, the doctor was there with the stethoscope, listening, 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 listening. And then he, he looks at the doctor and he says, what do you think, doctor, girl or boy? <laughs> Even in that mode of pain and everyone was so sad and serious, Maharaj was making everyone laugh nonstop. He was making everyone happy, you know, showing them that they're not this body. And during those months, those final two months that he was there, nonstop, he was using his, his, his situation to show the, peop show the devotees that we're not this body. We are the spirit soul. Right? And while we're here, what should we do? We should chant. We should focus on the Lord. And so um, the installation of Panchadatwa came. Um, Maharaj was able to bathe the deities. There's a very famous picture of Maharaj bathing Nityananda Prabhu. Um, you can search on Google. It's a very beautiful picture of Maharaj bathing. And then for Gorpurnim, he also was able to take part. He wasn't able to bathe on Gorpurnim, but he was able to be there. And then a little bit after, well, two weeks after Gorpanim, then was Shiva Thakur's uh, appearance day, and on that day he passed away. Just a few days before he passed away, he, he was still meeting devotees, talking with devotees, giving them association. And some another, he, he desired to speak to us, the small Gurukul boys that were there. At that time, there was only like five of us. I was seven? Eight. I was eight at that time. And he got us there in the room, and it was just us. He wanted just to talk to us. And he started talking about how surrendering one's life to Krishna is the only thing of importance, how um, Krishna conscious education is the only thing that really matters. He was talking about how we're not this body. And I remember I was very young and, of course, a very um, shocking experience seeing Maharaj in that situation barely able to sit up, but he was so happy. He was, he was laughing, he was making jokes. So I don't remember everything he said. He was speaking to us for like 45 minutes, but one thing he said at the end, he said, never doubt that what you're doing, learning Krishna consciousness, is the greatest goal. He said, and don't let anyone tell you anything different, he said. And till this day, it's very clear in my mind that this is all that matters. Krishna consciousness is all that matters. And um, we have to take advantage while we're here. We have to take advantage of being able to chant the holy name, being able to read Prabhupada's books, being able to, to take the association of devotees while we have it. And in that way, become more Krishna conscious because we don't know when that's going to go. Um, Maharaj, also he would say, In 2001, when he, when he was talking with Giraj Maharaj, he said that um, after being sick for so long, he came to Maharaj in, in a moment of privacy. He revealed to him, he said that for me in this stage of life, I've learned even more this little lesson that we are dasanu dasaha. Cultivate service to the Vaishnavas and you'll get everything. We need a family in which we can love and trust each other and not fear. We have to preach to so many materialistic people and their very aura is permeated with fear, lust, and greed. And sometimes we can become infected. But if we can come back to a community of friends and brothers and support each other with love, not superficially saying something, oh, I care for you, but actually caring deep down inside that this person is suffering and I care. And even materially, if we're able to show this care, we will be protected from this infection of greed and lust. Right? So he was so... Um, seriously encouraging us to develop real relationships with devotees, to have an actual community of people who support each other because we're preaching to karmis. And it's very difficult sometimes not to become affected by this hate, anger, greed, lust. And we start hating each other even though there's no reason to. So he was very, um, very sternly emphasizing care between devotees and love between devotees, so that we're able to protect ourselves and continue with Krishna consciousness. So, um, sorry, uh, let us remember him today, Sri Sri Sridhar Swami Ki Jai, 
And please read more about him, hear more about him. He was the jolly Swami, the happy Swami. And he, he was infectious with his love and care to everyone. Yeah? So I hope I inspired you to do some more reading and some more studying on these great personalities. And um, we very much hope to get their mercy on this day. Jai Granthraj Shima Bhagavatam Ki Jai. If any questions or comments, it would be wonderful. Yes, Peru. Uh, um, the Lord Himself, right? The Lord Himself, Nityananda Prabhu being the spiritual master, the Guru Tattva, Advaita Charya being the super soul, being always with us, uh, Garada Panda being the energy of the Lord, or Radharani who engages us, engages us in the service of the Lord, and Srivas Thakur being the devotee who, in their association, were able to perform devotional service. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? Yes, Mariji. Thank you Did everybody hear that? Yeah. Very wonderful pastime. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, Maharaj was supremely caring. He, um, that point that he shared that, that the relationships between the devotees, and he, every time he was in the hospital, different god brothers would come and see him, and he was so grateful, he was so appreciative of anyone who came to see him, not only god brothers, but he would, he would show his love, and he would show his appreciation, and he would show his appreciation for someone showing that they care for him, showing that they care for someone else. He would very much appreciate that and he would encourage that so much. It's something we can always learn from his life, from his, from his pastimes. Yeah? So I think, yes, Pru.
Thank you, Peru. Thank you. There's on this connection. There's also a pastime that happened in Los Angeles. One Maraji, Kunti Devi Maraji, she was taking care of him, but um, they weren't so careful with his with his diet. And of course, Maraj also he would desire certain things. So um, one day she, she made uh, veggie burgers and French fries <laughs> for Maraj, and of course Maraj wasn't supposed to eat it, but to reciprocate, he ate them. And then he was in the hospital the next day, and he was in coma for like four or five days. And when he came out of his coma to make the Maharaj feel a little better, he said, but those burgers were so good. <laughs> so he said, if I had a choice, I would go back to have more of your coma burgers, he would call them, the coma burgers. <laughs> Um, Maharaj also is well known for making the Ten Offenses to Pizza. I don't know if you've read that. He wrote the Ten Offenses to Pizza you can find. Um, he wrote them. It's really funny. He, he would do so many funny things like that. Yes, Ru? Yeah, so many fast times with that. Yes. Faith and Prashada to reciprocate with devotees. Yes, Manasi. I'm not sure, but uh, somewhere I heard that this picture we have on the altar of Panchatapa also, based on this picture, it's like the Maharaj is like this. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, there's two there's two parts. Um, first of all, the the for devotees, it's so important to have to have that care, to have that love for one another, to have that reciprocation, because we are people, we are human beings, we have needs, we have love, we have desires, and if we don't get them fulfilled within our devotee community, we're going to look for it elsewhere, right? unless one's desires for love, care, and affection are met, one will not be satisfied. And so sometimes as devotees, we think this is materialistic. This is, you know, this is maya. This is, you know, be, be above this body, Prabhu, be Krishna conscious, Prabhu, everything can be solved. Of course it can, but if we are not at that level, we should still be able to solve our necessities and our needs within our devotee community. And that's why Maharaj says, even materially, if we're able to care for one another and actually so show care for one another, then one will begin to move beyond that. It's like Grihastha Ashram. Grihastha Ashram is meant for us to come above and above and beyond that, to purify those needs and necessities we have. Does that mean that as a Grihastha we don't interact on a material level? No, of course you do. Right? You're purifying those needs and wants. So if someone has material desires or material um, problems that he's facing, one should still be able to resolve them within the community of devotees, amongst devotees. And that's why Rupa Goswami, he puts the six interactions between devotees, right? Dadati prati grihnati, guhya makyati prachati, bhungte bojayate chaiva, sadvidam priti lakshanam. They're priti lakshanam, loving exchanges. Not just exchanges, loving exchanges. And so how, when you're guhya makyati prachati, when you're in confidence, revealing one's mind to another devotee and also reciprocating, hearing what another person is going through in confidence, that's an exchange of love and that's an exchange of affection. To be able to give, show the problems that you're facing both on the material level and, and on the spiritual level and then having them heard and dealt with by another person or at least sharing your problems so that someone can also understand what you're going through. As, as, as just as people, we like to do that with our friends, with our mothers, with our parents, with our, with our wives, with our husbands, right? We like to express what you're going through. Everybody wants to express what they're feeling. It's a natural necessity of human beings. So why as devotees do we have to think, no, if, if, you know, if I'm going through some trauma, some distress or something, I shouldn't express that because it's not spiritual. That's, that's wrong. It's something that's hindering our devotional service, and so we should try our best to, di to dissipate it, to get rid of it, and to deal with it so that we're able to continue happily in our devotional service. And who else to do it with than with devotees? So that interaction is stressed by Rupa Goswami. Gukhya Makyati Prichati, it's one of six, and it's two of six. Right? It's two of six. Of six exchanges, it's two, so it's a lot. It's a big, it's a big part of it. And the interactions that, that would inspire us is that when we interact with someone and we see they actually appreciate our endeavor, right? If you do something for someone and you see they actually appreciate it and they take it to heart and they're like, wow, Prabhu, that was really nice, or reciprocate with that love, give you something back, of course we shouldn't do it with that expectation, but that's something that can inspire us. So for ourselves, if we want someone else to interact with us in a certain way, we should show appreciation when that happens. It's kind of like with the psychology of dealing with a child. If the child expresses some emotion or does something good, you should exaggerate the appreciation so they get that reciprocation and they'll want to do it again. Right? The child walks for the first time. Yay! And the child's like, why is everybody so happy? You know? And then he realizes I'm walking and I'll continue to walk more. The child does something small, you know, picks the, brings the shoes to the father. Oh, look, Baba, your shoes. My daughter does it every day. You have to be, wow, thank you so much, so amazing. And that, that appreciation for doing service to someone else will bring them joy, and they'll do it more and more. So the same with us, if we do something for someone else, and they don't appreciate, we don't feel that we want to do that. Right? 
And then the different things that would create us not to want to do that is, like you said, when you get burned. But then you have to understand that we're people and we have good days and we have bad days. Not every interaction will be perfect and not everything that we do will be perfect. We can snap sometimes, right? Anger comes, frustration comes, we're angry at something else and a devotee does something for us without us noticing and we, you know, snap at them, you know, say something in a moment of weakness that we didn't mean, right? So that's when the human aspect comes in and you have to understand that we're people and people make mistakes. Right? But that person is still my friend. That person is still someone worth me showing my appreciation for who they are and serving them out of love. Yeah? But until you create a deeper relationship, that, that little burn will be enough for you to break the relationship with that person. Right? If you don't have a real relationship with someone and the first interaction you have with them is something sharp, you're never going to want to deal with that person. Right? You come into a room and you see someone screaming and yelling. You don't know what happened or what was the reason he's like that. You're just going to think that person is an angry person. You judged him and that's it. You're never going to want to interact with him. But if you're able to de first develop a very deep relationship with the other devotee, then even if in a moment of anger, in a moment of weakness, he's, he burns you a little bit because of something he does, you understand that that's just him in this situation. And there, because of your love for him, you'll continue serving him, you'll continue appreciating him, continue um, being able to give your affection to him, even though he may not be reciprocating it at that time. So I would say the solution, Prabhu, would be to actually develop deeper relationships so that it's able to last over those little um, problems that may arise. And then it'll be long-lasting. And like Sridhar Maharaj says, then we'll have a community of people who actually care and so that we are able to get cleansed of the anger and hate that's out there in the world that we don't want to imbibe within our community. Yeah, like Maharaji so perfectly put it, that he was simply took too much material association. What do you say, Maharaji? Uh, yeah. okay. Too much material association, and therefore he got infected. Right? He became infected. He didn't have that association of devotees who were able to get rid of that, to clean that. And it, it, it's very, very important. So Maharaj realized that and he was stressing it so much. To have a community that's able to show love and actually for us to come in and feel so fully safe and secure and happy and loved and appreciated. Then they will have more to give when we go out and preach. Yes, bro. Absolutely, that, yeah, that makes perfect. I mean, not everyone will be your best friend, and that's why Rupa Goswami says, in confidence. If you're telling everyone, it's not in confidence. You'll have one or two people that you can really relate to. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had a few, a few people that he would really get into deep, deep, um, ecstatic love, Mahabhav. He wouldn't do it in front of everyone because the relationship wasn't the same. When Shurup, when Shurup, uh, Shurup Damodar right, would speak about Bhagavatam, Maharaj, uh, Mahaprabhu would go into ecstasy. He wouldn't do it in front of everyone. Right, so there are certain devotees in which you will be able to interact more and more deeply with certain, no, but that doesn't mean that we um, ignore or we disregard or we hate those people. That's why the more relationships you're able to build, the more lasting relationships and deep relationships you're able to build, build and the more people you're able to appreciate and see the good qualities in, the less judging you will do of other people because you'll see everybody has good qualities. Maybe I can't see it in that person, but that doesn't mean that the person's a bad person. Yeah, he has good qualities and I respect him for that. But we just don't have that kind of relationship. So there's still love and appreciation, just maybe not on such a deep level. 
It doesn't click. Yeah. 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 But if you, ha yeah, yes, Marie. It's something you're going through and, you know, you're insecure about or you're having trouble with. So th by sharing it with some of your best friends, that, you know, a problem shared is a problem halved, they say, right? It's in half because you shared it. Now that other person is going through it with me. So, in confidence, Rupa Goswami put Gukhya Makyati Prachiri. In confidence, in secret, Rupa Goswami says the word. Yes! <laughs> Joys. Relationship. Yeah. Sharing joys. Yeah. Sometimes we don't share joys, and that's a big problem in relationship. You always want your friends around in trouble. What, where are they when, you know, when you're in joy, when you're unhappy? You, know, you have to also share that. Otherwise, it's just very you know, down, very depressing to have a relationship that you're only a friends when you're both going through something bad. <laughs> no, you know, when you're happy also, you should you know, share that happiness with them. Very true, bro. Okay, we're a little bit over. Um, Granthraj Shima Bhagavatam ki, Srivas Pandit ki, Srila Sridhar Maharaj ki, Janitai Gorpramanandi.